I got this absolutely terrible book with me today. Hello, fellow plot questers. It is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today I got this book, Macbeth, by no other than our favorite author, Shakespeare. And well, let's get right on to it. So, I know all of us need to suffer through this book in high school. So I'm here to sort of go through it and talk about it so you don't actually have to read the, this terrible book in order to write the reading tables or whatever the crap you have to do because of your English teacher. Although my English teacher actually said the book was terrible and you're gonna suffer, that's why I love her, but most Eng some English teachers might, you know, just force you to read the boring book and write reviews on it and summaries on it. So I'm here to help you out. Let's get right into it. So yeah, so <laughs> the guy's name's Macbeth. I mean, who would have guessed? And so Macbeth is this cool general and he killed a rebellion. He's super loyal to King Duncan, the king of Scotland. And then he runs into three weird ladies who call themselves the witches, who says, hey, Macbeth, you're going to become king. And he immediately goes, wait, what? Then immediately believes them and tells his wife about them. And his wife immediately says, hey, let's murder the king. That seems like a good idea. Okay. And then two seconds later, the king is murdered. Macbeth is suddenly king for whatever reason. That doesn't make any sense at all. And now we have a King Macbeth. And meanwhile... <laughs> Well, now Macbeth wants to murder other people. There's this character called Banquo, who is Macbeth's best friend. He's introduced in the first act. And basically, Banquo also has a prophecy from the witches who says that Banquo's sons will be king. So basically, his entire line will be king, except he won't be king. Which also means Macbeth won't have a son and his son won't be king. And Macbeth is like, okay, I don't like that. I'm gonna murder Banquo as well. That seems like a good idea. And he immediately sends the worst possible murderers to kill Banquo and Fleance. Fleance being Banquo's son, by the way, because, you know, Banquo's sons will be, you know, the kings. And they send the three worst possible murderers. The murderers go in, gives Banquo time to yell at his son to run away. <laughs> <laughs> then murders Banquo, fails to murder the son, which is actually the important one in this case, by the way. And then the murderer, and then the murderers come back to, 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 to Macbeth. And Macbeth, meanwhile, is holding this banquet for all the lords, and he's going like, Okay, I'm the new king, you should all listen to me, I'm super, super cool. Then he walks in, and he sees Banquo's ghost sitting at his seat. And he goes, wait a minute, what the frick? And he ch starts chucking fruit at it. Get out, be gone, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, this is a good play, by the way, in case you didn't notice. And Banquo's ghost basically controls him for a little bit, makes Macbeth, Macbeth look completely insane in front of all of his important guests. And Lady Macbeth is just there do, trying to do damage control, like, oh my god, guys, um, this has happened to him since his childhood. It's like a mental disease that he has. It's okay, it'll pass, just let him go. Don't question him, it'll be okay. Yeah, you're making the situation worse, lady, like, seriously. And then, we're done. JK, there's still more to play. We're not done. And so, it's it's over. And everyone thinks Macbeth is nuts, and Lady Macbeth is probably more nuts. And meanwhile, a rebellion is blurring, because Macduff, who's basically this, one of the sons of Banquo, has gone over to England, where Malcolm has run away to, who is another son of Duncan, you know, the, pre the Scottish king who got killed by Macbeth. And those two are like, okay, let's take down Macbeth because he's being a tyrant. So they suddenly magically bring 10,000 English men into Scottish native land, which, you know, is a good idea considering England and Scotland are enemies. And they're bringing 10,000 of the English army with them on a coup de yacht. That's a complete completely plausible and good idea. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't notice, that was an advanced technique, something called sarcasm. Anyways, moving on. And they, you know, they ransacked Macbeth. 
Meanwhile, Macbeth is super, super happy because when he was king, he actually went to the three old ladies or the three old witches or whatever and asked for a prophecy in which they conjured up three little apparitions or ghosts. And one of them, the first one, was a armored head. Yep. And said, hey, you should be careful of Macbeth. The second one was a bloody baby who said, hey, you can't be harmed by anything born of a woman. But then, technically, if your mom died and someone, like, knifed you out of her C-section, that also means that you weren't born from a woman. Cough, cough, foreshadowing. And the third one said that Burnham would need, would need to move to Dunsinane Hill for Macbeth, Macbeth to be defeated. A wood to move to a hill? That's impossible! Or maybe it has some second meaning. Like, you know, someone grabs a branch off a tree or something and just walks into Donsonane Hill. Like, Macbeth, there's so many loopholes around that. You should maybe, you know, be a little bit more careful and not think you're freaking invincible. Like, why would they give- They're- The witches, they're pretty witches. They're so transparently evil that I don't really know why Macbeth- He's supposed to be like this super cool general, but no, 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 no. Believe in the three witches and basically do nothing. That's a good idea. Why would that be a bad idea? Chop, 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 we find out that Macduff actually is a C-section baby. So he technically wasn't born from a living woman. He stabs Macbeth, he dies, and Dunsinane Hill, I mean, the name of the wood, Burnham Wood moves to Dunsinane Hill, because of the most stupid thing. You know why? Because Malcolm says for all of his soldiers to bring a branch in front of them and walk forward towards the castle. So it looks like the woods were moved. Can you imagine that? Grown soldiers, grown soldiers with a branch in front of them marching with a sword. And Malcolm thought this was a good idea. Yeah, okay. This play is a good play. Uh, it's not a bad play at all. And yeah, so we got that, and that's pretty much the end of the play. Ma Macbeth dies, Malcolm becomes king, it's a happy ending, blah, 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 a bunch of people die, and a lot of the main characters die. In fact, most of them do. I mean, pretty much all of them do. So, it's a tragedy. Done. Now, to talk about a couple things... So that that uh prophecy thing, that three prophecy thing, that's a pretty important thing, so you should probably know about that. And the main themes of Macbeth are um good is good is bad, bad is good, so nothing is as it seems. And also ambition, that's a really big one where, you know, Macbeth is, you know, his ambition leads him to do all these terrible things and act like a completely illogical bastard who doesn't know how any of this crap works. I don't even know how Macbeth got the throne because he's a thane. A thane is like a lord, okay? He's like, you know, like an earl. An earl doesn't get the throne. He's not even next in line. Why? Why does this work like- No, yeah, okay. Since one of the Shakespeare write good plays, like, I should expect this. But anyways, yeah. So a great big thing is ambition. So for your English class, you should probably remember, major themes. Ambition. Nothing is as it seems. That's pretty much it. And then, a couple big things you should remember about the entire thing is some of Macbeth's soliloquies. Now, I actually did do a soliloquy performance for my English class, and this will make you laugh. But I'll show you guys it right now. To be thus is nothing. But to be safely thus. Our fears in Banco's stick deep. And in his royalty of nature, reigns that which would be feared. Tis much he dares, and to the dauntless temper of his mind, he hath a wisdom that doth guide his valour to act in safety. There is none but he whose being I do fear, and unto him my genius is rebuked, as it is said Mark Antony's was by Kaiser. He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me, and bade them speak to him. 
and prophet-like, they hailed a father to the line of kings. Upon my head they placed a fruitless crown and put a barren scepter in my grip, thence to be wrenched with an unmenial hand. No son of mine succeeded. If it be so, the bankers issue have I filed my mind. For then the gracious Duncan have I murdered. Rank is in the vessel of my peace, only for them. And my eternal given to a common enemy of mine. To make them kings, deceit and banquo kings. Come and set me to the list, and champion me to the other. Who's that? Yeah, so that was uh that was a nice soliloquy which shows Macbeth's real fear in Bangle. This is right after he murdered Duncan. And basically it's just a scene where he goes, Okay, I really, really afraid of Bangle. Then he says, Oh wait, I'm really, really annoyed at Bangle because well he technically just got the good end of the prophecy. Meanwhile I got tossed like the smaller end of the deal basically, and I got scammed. So he finally realizes he got scammed and decides he's gonna murder Banquo. That's literally the entire soliloquy. It's a pretty important one, by the way. Another important one is, is this a dagger? It's a scene, it's a soliloquy where Macbeth is like thinking about a dagger and this is the point where he actually thinks of murdering the king and like with all the internal conflict and all that. It only, by the way, it takes him a single day to decide to kill the king, by the way. Just saying, if Macbeth and Lady Macbeth did nothing and waited maybe a couple of years, I don't know, in a month, King Duncan could have died of a heart attack and they could have gotten him the throne. But no, absolutely not. They have to murder everyone. And yeah, yeah, you got my point. You, you just heard my summary. So yeah, this is, yeah, it's just great. And all the soliloquies are pretty important. By the way, soliloquy means everyone shut up and only this person is speaking sort of thing. So it's like internal monologue, like, you know, every single anime character does, like, Oh my god, the enemy's too strong, I can't beat him, blah 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 blah. So it's sort of like that, except it's Shakespeare's, which just makes everything worse. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And Macbeth is, at the end, just a criminally insane guy who became king, but wasn't smart enough to keep his throne, and didn't really know how to rule at all. And there's one good thing about Macbeth, it's better than Romeo and Juliet. That's about it, and you can't say this isn't a bad play because my English teacher agrees with me. So L. Anyways, if there are any Shakespeare fans out there, which I highly doubt, this stuff isn't even original, so like, yeah. And also, like, why would you enjoy something from, like, a, like six centuries ago? Uh, don't fact check me on that. Actually, fact check me on that if you want. really want to know how old these things are. Like, why would you read these? Like, I get how they helped form English literature, but you can read one of these and they'll be 2,000 times better. You want something about a coup d'iat? Read The Hunger Games or something. Like, why? What? Yeah. You, you get, I think you get my eminent hate for this book, and I'm sure you hate it already as well. So have a good time learning in an English unit in high school, and I hope this video sort of helped. Remember, themes are ambition, big things are ambition, and nothing is as it seems. Important are soliloquies, especially the one about the dagger, and the one about Macbeth regretting sort of his choices after his wife dies. And the one that I showed you that I performed, which is the point where he kills Banquo and absolutely goes nuts. And the prophecy about, you know, the baby and the C-section that it did explain. If you want to go back, go back to check it out. Those are the pretty important parts that you should probably remember about the play. Hope it helped. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron the plot quester, this book absolutely sucks. Like I said, the only thing good about this book is it's better than Romeo and Juliet. Have a great day, and 
By the way, kudos to the people who are suffering through this book. Rip. Rest in pieces. See ya, boys. Have fun. Oh, and boys and girls. I'm not sexist. See ya.